Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shawls. Today we have, well, it's our final story of the week, and it's our final new story of 2020. And, as I said before, it is a story from Carolyn S. Bailey once again, and it is the perfect story for Christmas Day. This is The Child Who Saw Santa Claus. There was, once upon a time, a child who wanted very much to see Santa Claus, just as every other child has always wanted to see him. So the child listened at the chimney for Santa Claus, and watched for him when sleighs flew by over the snowy streets, and wanted to touch his rosy cheeks and his red cloak trimmed with white fur. "'I'm old enough now to see Santa Claus,' the child said. That was quite true, because he was seven years old. "'Show him to me, mother,' he begged. "'Oh, I cannot do that,' the child's mother said. "'I can tell you about Santa Claus, but I cannot show you his face.' "'May I go out and look for Santa Claus myself, then?' the child asked. "'This is the day before Christmas, and if I do not see him today, you know I shall have to wait a whole year.' "'Yes, you may go out and look for Santa Claus,' the child's mother said, and she brought him his warm coat and cap and his red mittens. "'But do not go too far away from home.' "'for Santa Claus stays very close to the homes where the children are on Christmas Eve,' she added. "'So the child started out. "'He was very sure that he would know Santa Claus when he saw him. "'Ever since he was a very little boy, he had seen pictures of Santa Claus. "'He would be a jolly, fat little old man with twinkling eyes and a nose like a cherry. "'He would wear a long red cloak, and perhaps he would be in his toy shop making toys, "'of which he would give the child a great many.' or he would be driving his sleigh full of toys through the city, and the child would know that he was coming by the tinkling sound of his silver bells. At the gate, the child met his grandfather. He was a very old man with white hair and spectacles, but he could play horse as well as the child and all the child's nicest toys, the stone blocks and the train with tracks, and all the rest his grandfather had given him. Now, His grandfather's arms were full of fat, mysterious parcels. One parcel bulged as if it were a toy fire engine, and another parcel bulged as if it were a baseball mask and a ball and gloves. "'Where are you going?' the child's grandfather asked. "'I'm going to see Santa Claus,' the child answered. The grandfather smiled until his blue eyes shone. "'Will you know Santa Claus when you see him?' he asked. "'Oh, yes,' the child said. Santa Claus is an old man with white hair and twinkling eyes and nose like a cherry. But the child suddenly stopped. Oh, ho! His grandfather laughed, and the child listened in surprise. He had never heard such a merry laugh before. His grandfather rubbed his nose at the cold head painted as red as a cherry. Then his grandfather was gone, and the child went on, wondering. The streets were full of people their arms crowded with big white parcels tied with red ribbon. Some of them carried great green wreaths and bunches of holly. There were so many grocery teams and toy shop teams and flower shop teams that the child was afraid to cross the street. He went part of the way across. Then he saw the horses coming and he did not know which way to go. He might have been hurt, but a kind hand took hold of his and helped him safely across the street. He looked up at the man who wore a long red cloak trimmed with white. "'Who are you?' the child asked. "'One of the Christmas helpers,' the man said. "'I stand here at the street corner and ring a Christmas bell, "'and people who pass by give me money for my poor ones. "'And where are you going?' he asked the child. "'I'm going to see Santa Claus,' the child answered. "'Will you know Santa Claus when you see him?' the man asked. "'Oh, yes,' the child said. "'Santa Claus wears a long red cloak trimmed with white.' "'But then the child stopped.' The man pulled his red cloak about him. It was very cold, and he had no fire. Then he took his place at the street corner again. The child watched him and then went on wandering. A little further on, there was an old man sitting in a shop and making toys. Once he had been a soldier, but now he was able to do nothing but sit at his workbench carving and gluing and painting playthings for children. The child went in and watched him work. There were woolly lambs that would bleat and toy horses with harnesses on the shelves of the toy shop. 
There were dolls with blue eyes and dolls with brown eyes and dolls that could talk and dolls that could walk, all waiting there for Christmas Eve. The toy man himself was fitting wheels on wooden carts and wheelbarrows, and as he worked he sang a quaint little tune with these words. A little green tree from a far white hill made a Christmas tree by my merry skill. Then the toy man, who used to be a soldier, turned to the child who was just going out of the shop. Where are you going? the toy man asked the child. I'm going to see Santa Claus, the child answered. Will you know Santa Claus when you see him? the toy man asked. Oh, yes, the child said. Santa Claus will be making toys. But he did not say any more, for the toy man got down from his bench and put a box of quaintly carved little wooden animals in the child's happy hands. It was a good gift, for each animal is different, and it had taken the toy man many evenings to cut them out. Merry Christmas to you from Santa Claus, said the toy man, as the child thanked him and went on wondering. Now it was Christmas Eve, and so the child started home. The lights from the Christmas candles shining from the many windows made a bright path for him, and he felt very happy indeed. He knew how pleasant it would be at home. The Christmas tree would be set up, waiting for the gifts that each one was going to give the others. There would be a fire of new logs in the fireplace, and holly wreaths at the windows, and he would hang up his stocking. The child felt as glad as if Santa Claus were walking home by his side through the snowy street, but he thought, just before he reached home, I wish that I could hear Santa Claus's bells. Then the child stopped and listened. He heard, coming toward him on the frosty air, the sound of many silver-toned bells. The Christmas star had shone out in the sky as soon as the sun set. Now the church bells were ringing, some near and some far, to welcome the holy child of Christmas Eve. The chiming was as wonderful as the sound of the strings of silver bells on Santa Claus's sleigh. I shall know Santa Claus by the sound of his bells, the child repeated to himself. Then he came home, and his mother was very glad to have him back. Did you see Santa Claus? she asked. Oh, yes, the child answered, for he was quite sure about it now. I saw him when I met Grandfather, and I saw him standing in a red cloak at the street corner and helping the poor. I saw him in the toy man's shop, and I heard his bells ringing just now. I saw Santa Claus everywhere, the child said. And so may every child see Santa Claus, wherever love and goodness are, at the blessed Christmas time. That is Carolyn Sherwin Bailey's The Child Who Saw Santa Claus. A really lovely story to share this Christmas Day, especially as it is our final story of 2020. I've said it before this week, I've said it before a bunch, I believe, but this was quite a year, wasn't it? Hopefully, next year will be better for everyone. And I just want to take a moment to thank absolutely everyone who has listened, shared, helped to support the podcast, give a rating or review, just every one of you who has listened to the show. Thank you so much. This is Dan Schultz for The Folktale Project. This is Dan Schultz for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you'd like to listen. If you'd like to help support the podcast, you can head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But not next week. Next week, you won't have a new story. Next week, we'll have the top stories from 2020, the ones that were listened to the most and that you enjoyed the most. Once again, and as always, thank you all so much for listening. <laughs>